everybody, I'm Brian Pointer. I am host of Indie Sports Show Live. We're here in the Champions Pavilion. We're at the 65th annual Ford Boat Sport and Travel Show. And we are in the very popular at this time of day Travel Cafe. Couldn't be happier than to have all the sights and sounds and the people here to experience what this show is all about. We've covered hunting, we've covered fishing, we've covered duck calling and goose calling, and we've got so much more to come. And it's my honor to have Tommy Scarless on the couch with me here. Tommy, how are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm having a good time. You're probably one of the most positive people that's uh, been a part of our program. I know you're just thankful to be doing what you're doing. Yeah, you know, every day I wake up before I put my feet on the ground, I, I thank God for being alive. And from that point on, it's just about being happy and smiling and trying to positively affect other people's life. I, look at the job. I know. You live in, uh, you're you making your vocation your vacation. Yep. And there's a reason that you have that optimism. We're going to get to all your success fishing, but you wouldn't be able to do any of this about, uh, what, three years ago? You took a tr fall from a tree stand, broke your neck? Yeah, probably 28 months ago. Uh, plummeted 20 feet, got flipped upside down, landed on my head, and uh, broke my neck right where uh, my neck and my, my back meet. And, um, you know, it's quite a shock when the surgeon looks at you and says, son, we can't figure out why you're not paralyzed from the shoulders down. And, uh, you know, I know why, and I've got a great amount of faith and uh, had a lot of support from family, had some great surgeons that put me back together. But just to be walking and talking and, and being able to, to, again, help people with their fishing is one of the, one of the greatest things in life. It is. Me. You were the World Walleye Champion in 2017 and 18. How do you continue to dominate? You know, I, I can't figure it out. I mean, I work hard. I try to break down patterns in fishing and then try to exploit them. But, you know, I, I try not to make it too complicated. It's fishing. They swim. They eat. You try to put a lure in front of them and hope that they eat it. And uh, the more you keep your lures in the water in front of more fish, the more fish you're going to catch. So here at the Boat Sport and Travel Show, you're doing seminars on both walleye and crappie, multi-species. And why do they call you Mr. April and Mr. Erie? Well, uh, back in 2001, 2002, 2004, I won tournaments on the PWT in Detroit River, Lake Erie, and then over on the Wolf River in Wisconsin. So I, I've, I've done pretty well in April. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the championships have been in October and September, but uh, now I've actually been able to win some tournaments in September and October. And the colorful moniker of Lake Erie, or Mr. Erie, I set the world record back in 2002 where I had 18 walleyes that ended up weighing 132 pounds. It was That's about a world a, record. It was a 9.22 pound average, yeah. So I'll, I'll take all the colorful monikers. It's fun. I like them. Well, you know, we have the uh, Indiana Walleye Association Angler of the Year as our floor director out here. Do you guys know each other? No, <laughs> Not I, yet. That's, that, that's, that's why I've won titles, because he doesn't fish some of the stuff I fish. So you've got a big following here. Um, we've already talked about how you dominate. Let's talk about walleye and food, because you brought it up. What is it about the walleye? What are you looking for with the food? Is that the most important thing? Well, you know, you've got to be able to figure out what they're eating and where they're eating it at. You don't have to get too complex. I hear guys all the time, well, there's emerald shiners in the water and the uh, smallmouth bass are moving those around and the walleyes are coming up from underneath. If I see big balls of bait, I know I found the grocery store. If I can mark fish, I know I found the fish. And then if I can get them away from the grocery store and they're hungry, I could probably put a lure in front of them and catch them. So I try to do that all the time. I, I try to find the fish, try to relate to what they're eating, and then put something in front of them that looks like what they're eating. You just and, make uh, it so simple. Well, Nobody I mean, needs to come to your seminars now. No, no, no. They have to come to the seminars because I let her rip, and I talk about tactics that the other day there was two or three of my fellow competitors in the crowd. These are secrets that I've used to catch fish from the line, the lure, the rod, and the reel. And I let her rip and, and uh, share everything with everybody because I want them to go out, take that information, and be successful. I heard somewhere that you caught your first fish with your mom. Yeah, and God bless her, she's still alive, 84, well, excuse me, mom. I'm not supposed to say how old mom is. But uh, she took me out fishing. She was tired of us boys being in the house. I, I remember with a bun hairdo digging around in the garden for crawlers or worms back then. 
and uh, she took me out fishing and caught a bluegill was my first fish. The second fish, being that I'm from Iowa, was a bullhead. And uh, okay, all my Minnesota buddies, you're all at home laughing about that right now. But yeah, it was great. And she was a farm girl. She helped me shoot my first pheasant. She uh, figured out a way to talk dad into letting us have some money so we could have gas money to go hunting. And yeah, if it wasn't for my mom, I wouldn't have got into fishing and hunting. That's a very, very different story, different entry, and that's great. Um, talk to me about homemade, making your own lures. I know that's something you, you talk about. Yeah, you know, I have a great passion for fishing, and it's so fun to be able to create a lure that, and catch a fish on it, something you made, something that you poured. So we pour a lot of lead uh, jigs out of uh, do-it molds. Now do-it molds has come out with a line of plastic molds where you can shoot your own plastics. And uh, they've also got an essential series, which is a less expensive form than instead of buying a 80 or or $100 mold, you could buy that mold for quite a bit less than that. And we shoot our own plastics, make our own creature baits. And uh, from pa plaster of Paris molds where you can kind of concoct your own lizards and critters to these do-it molds now, it's just fun. Another form of tackle crafting, another form of fishing, because you're building the lures, then you're going out and using them. Jigs or live bait? Um, I like it all. I like using jigs. I like putting live bait on jigs. Um, I like artificial baits. I like crank baits. I'm a, I'm a lure junkie. So I, I, I call it a collection. And some of them I've got in my tackle box, some of them I've got pinned to the wall, and they move back and forth, depending on what's hot or what I need to collect. And I love it. So when you're out there, you, social media is a big part of what you do. You teach on YouTube, a lot of videos. Does that ever get old? No, you know, it's, it's fun. It get, you know, a lot of people say, well, that's great. You got on a magazine cover that, man, you're, you're on videos and, and I've seen you. And, you know, it's the nature of the business. But this YouTube stuff, I'm really starting to get my hands around it and trying to figure out what the people want to see. And, you know, I've got my son, both sons that are constantly doing this. And they'll be sitting there and all of a sudden they do this. And all of a sudden, they'll, you know, so we got to get on these screens so instead of watching some of this other stuff, they're watching fishing. That's a very, they're very watching good, hunting. Very good point that, you know, I don't think anybody's brought up, and you that leads me perfectly to the next segment, which is technology. And I know technology. We've heard this over and over and over again. If you don't embrace the technology, you're not going to be a, a better fisherman. But it's there to help you. What are some of the things that you're seeing that are popular electronics that you want to make sure people are aware of? Well, you know, our cell phones, we're starting to get apps for fishing. I think you talked about one with Keith Cabayas, yes. Precision Trolling, last weekend where they've got the dive curves on here. My favorite little icon on my phone is this Navionics icon right there to where it shows you right there our location on the screen. If I zoom in out on that, all of a sudden I've got Lake Michigan up here. I've got the different bodies of water. So I've got the Navionics mobile app to where I can actually go and look at a body of water before I fish it. Or if I go fishing with you and you don't have complex electronics in your boat, I, I, I have no idea what you got, but I got this with I got me. nothing. Well, I got this. <laughs> so I can say, hey, bro, go a little bit to the left. There's a deep hole over there. Maybe there's some walleyes over there, and we find his secret spot. Or, you know, I've got Navionics Mobile to show me the patterns. And sometimes it's just a matter of finding what depth the fish are in. So if you find out the fish are in 12 foot of water, you look on your Navionics map, you go to the 12 foot contour line, we can all of a sudden exploit that pattern just simply by finding the depth and using our apps to do that. So you're world champion, uh, you've got rec world records. What's, what do you want to do next? What's, what's your next bucket list item? You know, I, I want to see my, my kids, kids someday. I've got a 13 and 15 year old son. I, I really am getting down on bucket lists, you know, I, and I should have a bunch, you know, because I don't want to depart this earth too soon, but I just love going and helping people with fishing, with how to catch more fish, with their hunting. You know, I want to encourage everybody that's watching this right now, seat belts, safety harnesses in your tree stand, life jackets. You know, and a big part of this show, I think, is 811, call before you dig. Yeah. But, uh, you know, just safety first. And uh, if I can help people with that and help them, you know, enjoy their fishing and live longer lives, hey, man, I think that's probably the bucket list for me is just to keep helping people enjoy their fishing. 
teaching or competitive fishing? Which would you rather do? I would rather use the competitive fishing I'm still doing to teach, but it's getting harder and harder. You know, I'm in my early 50s right now. I still can bring it. I still could be competitive, even with recovering from a broken neck or having some of the issues that I'm gonna have from that spinal injury. But the competition's nice. I, I love fishing. You know, my wife right now has challenged me with, we're gonna go on our 20th anniversary and she says no fishing. And I'm like, baby, you can't put that on me. <laughs> you know, I quit drinking. I quit a lot of my bad habits. You know, I don't smoke. I wanna fish. and. Uh, so I'm still kind of working on her. Maybe I'm just going to have to spend more money and take her to a nicer destination and add a couple of days on that trip and let her go to the spa while I go fishing. But the, the walleye fishing community, I think, is a bit different. You guys seem to all get along, share information, have a good collegial spirit. Do you see it differently? Um, you know, I'm getting to know a lot of these guys. Or you guys. just want to kick their butts all the time, don't you? Oh, no, no. I, You know, you've got that competitiveness. It's just like... Foghorn, Leghorn, uh, you know, or like the coy wildy coyote and the sheepdog. We're buddies as we walk to work, and then when we cl we beat each other up all day, and then we clock out and walk home holding our lunch pails together. So the competitiveness will do that. There's going to be some rubbing and racing, and uh, I've, I've got some guys that uh, may not like me because of I beat them in a tournament, and I didn't mean to beat them. There was 119 other guys I had to beat in that tournament as well. There's been a lot of times they've dished it out to me too. And uh, you know, the, 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 the greasy kid stuff, you know, that competitive stuff, that, you know, I don't need the drama. I like the competitiveness, but I like the fishing the most. So of those peers, we've had a lot of them sit here at Indie Sports Show Live, with pretty big names like yourself, legends in walleye fishing. Is there anybody that you haven't fished with that you want to in your boat? You know, I, I've actually, I want to fish with Al Linder. I just talked to Al on the phone the other day. I want to fish with Keith Cavias. I've never been out on the boat with really? Keith. Really? Uh, yeah, I want to fish with, uh, oh, we've got a guy here, Ed Stahusky, at this show. And then there's a couple of other walleye guys that are up and comers. I want to fish with the producer. If he's the, uh, or what do you, what's his he's title? He's the uh, team angler of the year, team of the yeah, year. Yeah, so I want to go fishing with him. I want to learn from him. I'd like to go fishing with you. But, uh, oh, and that'd, I be, just wanna, that'd be a bad day for you. I, I want to go fishing with everybody. And, uh, I don't know, some of these bass guys like uh, the general, Larry Nixon, he's one of my heroes, Denny Brower. I'd love to go fishing with those guys because you can learn something from everybody. Yeah. And the day I quit learning fishing, it's the day I'm probably have done, been, I'm pushing up daisies, I'm done fishing. How do you think those other people describe you? You talk about the competitiveness, what would they say about you? I don't know, man, they, they you know, I, I'm pretty quirky. I'm a little flaky. Uh, They've got a lot of, one of the nicknames is the Great Scarlini. That's one of my colorful monikers. I, uh, they, I think a lot of them don't think I'm a threat. I think a lot of them just say, you know, he's, he's, he's been lucky. I want to keep him thinking that, lull him into a sense of false security. I don't know if you're a two-time world champion if you're just lucky. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes, you know, and luck is where preparation meets opportunity. Yep. We've had some divine intervention. We've had some fortuitous bounces. Um, and there's times that I've got to realize that no matter what titles I've won, they're not going to define me. You know, it's my character and my ability to help other people and work with other people. And I don't have to like everybody, but I have to love everybody. So and that's what I want to work on. In the short time that we have left, is there anything that I haven't brought up or something that you'd like to share with people that you like to communicate? You know what? You know, I think the people ought to go fishing and sometimes they, they get there's too much pressure there there's a lot of technology there's a lot of build up for that another thing i want to share is with kids get them a great big tackle box they've got these great big lure lockers from lure lock or tack logic to where uh, you get them a great big tackle box and it's full of these tackle trays that are boxes within boxes and and challenge those kids to fill it with lures you know we got to somehow or another hook them get them out fishing Get them off the screens. And the easiest way to do that is get them a tackle box. I don't know that we could end this any better. Tommy Scarless, world record holder, world champion, angler, crappie, walleye. Those are what his sessions are going to be about. We're not going to give away any more because you need to come and see him. We're here at the 65th Annual Ford Boat Sport and Travel Show. We're in the Champions Pavilion, and we're going to be here all day long doing Indie Sports Show Live. I'm your host, and we're going to be back right after this.